Lower belly fat is a common issue for nearly everyone, whether you're a regular gym goer or a professional bodybuilder. It's notoriously difficult to shed that last bit of stubborn fat around the lower abdomen. You likely already know that to tackle this, you need to maintain a calorie deficit, avoid processed, refined, and high sugar foods, and exercise regularly to strengthen your lower abs. However, there are many important factors about lower belly fat that you might not be aware of which can lead to unrealistic expectations and hinder your goal of achieving a flat midsection. Today, I want to discuss the things nobody tells you about lower belly fat. First, let's address the unrealistic expectation of having zero rolls or folds when sitting down. Many people think that having a perfect six-pack means your abs will always look chiseled and flawless no matter your position, how you much eat, or how relaxed your abs are. Human anatomy is designed to be flexible and functional, not always rigid. Your skin and underlying tissues need to stretch and fold to accumulate movement and changes in body position. When you sit down, your abdominal muscles relax and your skin naturally forms creases. This is normal and healthy. Even professional bodybuilders and fitness models who have impressive six-packs on stage or in photos do not maintain that look at all times. In fact, as you get leaner and lose fat around your lower stomach, you might develop more folds and creases. This is especially true if you lost a significant amount of body fat as you may have some excess skin around your lower abs. Remember that even fitness models don't have a perfect set of abs all time. After eating a big meal, their stomach bulge out and when they sit down, they have folds, creases, and rolls. When they relax their abs, they don't look as impressive as in the pictures. Bodybuilders and models use specific poses, lighting, and sometimes dehydration techniques to achieve that perfect appearance in photos. This is not their everyday look. Their abs are subject to the same natural folds and fluctuations as anyone else's. Another reason why lower belly fat is particularly stubborn is due to presence of alpha and beta receptors in fat cells. These receptors significantly influence how fat is stored and mobilized in different body parts. Alpha and beta receptors are proteins found on the surface of fat cells that respond to catecholamines, which are hormones like adrenaline and noradrenaline. These hormones signals the body to either store or release fat. Beta receptors in particular stimulate fat breakdown. When catecholamines bind to beta receptors, they trigger reactions that release fatty acids from fat cells into the bloodstream where they can be used for energy. Beta receptors are more common in areas of the body where fat is more easy mobilized such as the arms, legs, and face. Meanwhile, alpha receptors do the opposite. They inhibit fat breakdown, signaling the fat cell to hold on to its fat stores. Areas with higher concentrations of alpha receptors are more resistant to fat loss. Unfortunately, the fat cells in the lower belly tend to have a higher ratio of alpha receptors to beta receptors. This means that even when your body is in a state of fat mobilization, such as during a calorie deficit, the alpha receptors in the lower belly can still interfere with fat breakdown, making it harder to lose fat in that area. This is something you can control, but there's a significant factor within your control that might be preventing you from losing that last bit of stubborn lower belly fat. Metabolic adaptation, also known as adaptive thermogenesis. This is a process where your body adjusts its energy expenditure in response to changes in your diet and activity levels. If you are strictly following your diet plan, when you consume fewer calories that your body needs, your metabolism slows down as a protective mechanism to conserve energy and prevent what your body perceives as starvation. This slowdown can make it harder to continue losing fat over time. Lower belly fat is one of the last spots your body chooses to burn fat from, so metabolic adaptation will definitely influence this process. That's why I can almost guarantee that the calorie deficit you start with to burn fat will not be the same one required to eliminate the last bit of stubborn lower belly fat. As you diet and lose weight, your body needs less energy to maintain a smaller mass, so you must continually adjust your calorie and macronutrient intake. 
When you hit a plateau and stop losing fat for two weeks or longer, try reducing your daily calories by 200 to 300 and reevaluate your progress in one to two weeks. Additionally, incorporating low intensity activities like walking can help burn extra calories and keep fat loss going. Another reason lower belly fat is so difficult to lose is that the area receives less blood flow and has larger fat cells compared to the other body parts. Blood flow is crucial for fat loss because it allows fat mobilizing hormones to reach fat cells, release stored fat, and transport it to the liver for energy processing. Lower blood flow in the lower belly means fewer catecholamines can reach these fat cells, reducing fat mobilization effectiveness. Compounding this problem is the size of the fat cells in the lower belly. These cells are typically larger and denser, making them more resistant to break down. Next, let's discuss the genetic influence on two factors, fat storage pattern and lower abdominal muscle autonomy. Fat storage patterns, which determine where your body tends to store fat, are significantly influenced by genetics. These patterns dictate the distribution of fat across different areas of your body such as your midsection, thighs, hips, arms, and face. Your genetics can influence where you store body fat, including the abdominal region and lower belly fat. Women tend to accumulate more fat around their hips and lower body, while men often struggle with fat around their center of their mass, such as love handles and lower belly fat, creating an apple-shaped distribution pattern. These genetic fat distribution patterns vary among individuals and are beyond your control. Similarly, genetic factors also influence your muscular autonomy. Even after burning a significant amount of lower belly fat, some people may not achieve a perfect V-cut abs. This is because the shape and insertion points of your obliques and rectus abdominis muscles are genetically determined. As a result, two people with the same body fat percentage can have completely different looking abs. Therefore, it's essential to compare your progress weekly, monthly, and yearly to your own previous results rather than to others. Now let's talk about supplements. Many false claims are made by supplement companies trying to sell their fat burners. You'll find products labeled as stored fat belly burner or belly fat burner for men with promises like destroy stubborn belly fat, lose stomach fat, and stomach fat burner. These fat burners usually fall into specific categories. Thermogenetics, which acts as a stimulant to increase your metabolic rate, helping you burn more calories throughout the day. Fat blockers, which claim to block the absorption of fat from the food you eat. Appetite suppressants, which help reduce hunger, leading to lower calorie intake. Carb blockers, which aim to prevent the digestion and absorption of carbohydrates. The truth is that none of these supplements will specifically target your belly fat. Your genetic fat storage and fat burning patterns are outside of your control and spot reduction is a myth. Fat loss occurs uniformly across your body based on your overall calorie deficit and genetic factors. I hope this video has provided you with new insights about your lower belly fat. If it has helped you, please subscribe to our channel.